Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungso. Pray for us. Brothers and sisters, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten journey, we are gathered on this second Sunday of Lent to celebrate the Eucharist as God's beloved children. As we listen to God's Word and as we partake of the body and blood of Jesus, may we, may we be transformed and become more like Jesus our Lord. And we, may we become more obedient and faithful children of God our Father. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of God's love. Let us be sorry for our many sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered him up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving and will, I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Shall Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, 
who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. To those who are joining us online, if you could only see the Manila Cathedral today, it is very white because almost everyone is wearing white. And we wish to thank you for heeding our invitation to wear white this Sunday. And I hope those who are joining us online are also wearing white. Please take a picture of yourselves and post your picture showing us that you are also wearing white. We ask you to wear white clothes today because as we continue our reflection on baptism as part of our celebration of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, our particular focus this Sunday is the white garment of baptism. Remember that part of the celebration of baptism is the donning, the wearing of the white garment. Pagkatapos binyagan ang isang sanggol, siya ay sinusuotan ng marangyang puting damit. And as the child is being donned with the white garment, the priest utters these words, 
You have become a new creation and have clothed yourself with Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life in heaven. Yan po ang sinasabi ng pari habang isinosuot ang puting damit ng pangbinyag. Ang puting damit ay tanda ng iyong karangalan bilang kristyano. At huwag mong hahayaang madumisan ang puting damit na iyan. Panatilihin mong wagas at walang bahid dungis ang damit na iyan, ang karangalan mo upang ito'y madala mo ng walang dungis at malinis sa kalwalhatian sa langit. The white garment of baptism is the outward sign of our Christian dignity. Ang puting damit ay tanda ng ating karangalan bilang mga Kristiyano. Kaya po napakahalaga ng puting damit sa binyag. Ngayon po, pag nagbibinyag kami, nagugulat kami minsan sa mga damit na isinosuot sa mga babing bibinyagan. Minsan ang suot-suot, Superman, nakakostume ni Batman, o kaya ni Spider-Man. Minsan ang suot-suot mukhang dinosaur yung batang bibinyagan. Ang damit ng binyag ay puting damit sapagkat ito ay tanda ng ating karangalan bilang mga Kristiyano. The sign of our Christian dignity. And what is our Christian dignity? What do we mean by Christian dignity? Ano ba yung karangalan natin bilang mga Kristiyano? Our readings today show this to us. In our gospel, this second Sunday of Lent, we heard the story of the transfiguration of Jesus. Nagbagong anyo si Jesus. And what happened? His clothes became dazzling white. Naging puting-puti ang kanyang damit na wala daw makapagpapaputi noon dito sa lupa. Kung magkukumparahan po tayo ng inyong puting damit at hahanapin natin yung pinakamay maputing damit, walang wala yan doon sa damit ni Jesus nang siya'y magbagong anyo. No fuller on earth, no walang labandera sa lupa ang maaring magpaputi ng ganun. And the transfiguration of Jesus is a manifestation of His glory. He shows His glory to Peter, James, and John. And by showing His glory, Jesus shows them who He really is. Jesus shows them His dignity. And what is His dignity? That He is the Son of God. And this was confirmed by the voice of the Father that they heard, This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. Nung maging puting-puti ang damit ni Jesus at siya'y nagbagong anyo, ipinakita niya kung sino siya ang kanyang tunay na karangalan. Siya ay anak ng Diyos. If our gospel is about the story of a father and a son, God the Father and Jesus the Son of the Father, Our first reading today is also about 
a father and a son, Abraham and his son, Isaac. And our first reading is a very edifying story of the total obedience and submission of Abraham to God that he was willing to offer he even his own son, Isaac, to God. Buong-buo ang pagsunod at pagtalima ni Abraham na kahit na ialay ang kanyang sariling anak, gagawin niya bilang pagsunod sa Diyos. But when Abraham was about to sacrifice his son Isaac, the angel of the Lord told him, Do no harm to that boy. Do not hurt him. And by doing that, Isaac was saved. He is not just any animal that could be sacrificed. He is a son. And that is the dignity of Isaac. Isa siyang anak na aalagaan, iingatan, at mamahalin. Sa pagliligtas ng Diyos sa buhay ni Isaak, pinapakita niya sa atin ang karangalan ng isang anak at ang anak hindi sinasaktan, ang anak hindi papatayin, ang anak aalagaan, iingatan at mamahalin. My dear brothers and sisters, this is our Christian dignity. We are all children of God. And St. Paul tells us in our second reading today, if God did not spare His own Son, but handed Him over for us all, how will He not also give us everything else along with Him? Kung yung ang anak niya na ibigay niya ang buhay para sa atin, ano pa ba ang hindi kayang ibigay ng Diyos sa atin? Ganun tayo kamahal ng Diyos dahil tayo'y mga anak ng Diyos kay Kristo Jesus. We are children of God in Christ Jesus. And that is our Christian dignity. The white garment of baptism is a symbol that we are all children of God. My dear brothers and sisters, let that stick to our minds and to our hearts. Our dignity is that I am a child of God. Ang karangalan ko ay dahil anak ako ng Diyos. Our dignity is not derived from the amount of money that you have in your bank accounts. Our dignity is not derived from our wealth or properties. Our dignity is not derived from our titles, positions, and authority. Minsan ang akala natin ang isang taong mas mayaman, mas maraming pera at maraming ari-arian, mas mahalaga at mas malaki ang karangalan. Minsan akala natin kapag marami akong titles, maraming mga abbreviations dun sa dulo ng aking pangalan, mas marangal ako kaysa sa iba. Minsan akala natin yung mga taong matataas ang posisyon, mas may karangalan kaysa doon sa mga walang posisyon. My dear brothers and sisters, whether we are poor or rich, whether we are healthy or sick, whether we are able or disabled, whether we are intelligent or mentally challenged, whether we are the boss, or we are just an ordinary employee, we are all equal in dignity because we are all children of God. 
pantay-pantay tayong lahat sa Diyos. Ang karangalan natin pare-pareho sa mata ng Diyos. Pare-pareho tayong kanyang mga anak. And when we face God, He will not ask us, magkano ba ang naipon mo sa bangko? Hindi naman niya itatanong, gaano ba karami ang lupa, no? ang properties mo? May investments ka ba? Hindi naman niya itatanong, o anong educational degree ang naabot mo? O anong posisyon mo? Anong kapangyarihan mo? Hindi naman yun ang itatanong ng Diyos kapag tayo'y humarap sa Kanya. What will God ask us when we come to Him face to face? Have you become a good son? Have you become a good daughter? Have you become a faithful and obedient child? Because our dignity is our being children of God. Huwag po natin kakalimutan ito. Napakahalagang alalahanin palagi ng ating karangalan ay ang pagiging anak ng Diyos. We may have different responsibilities. We may have different positions. We may have different status in society. But those does not determine our dignity. Ang dignidad hindi nakasalalay sa ating responsibilidad o tungkulin o posisyon sa lipunan. Hindi doon nakasalalay ang ating karangalan. Maaaring magkakaiba-iba tayo ng ating ginagawa, tungkulin. Maraming yung iba, maaaring yung iba, mas maraming responsibilidad, mas mataas ang posisyon. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun, mas marangal ang sila kaysa sa iba. We may have different functions, but we are always equal in dignity. Huwag nating iisipin na mas mataas ang posisyon, mas marangal kaysa sa iba. Mas mahalaga ako dahil mas may kapangyarihan. Mas mahalaga ako dahil ako'y mas mayaman. At kayong wala, mahina, mas mababa ang karangalan. No, we are all equal in dignity. There may be differences in functions, responsibilities, and status in society. But our dignity will always be the same. We are children of God. Kahit saan pong larangan sa ating lipunan, madalas nagkakaroon tayo ng misconception about our dignity. Minsan, ang tingin nga natin, mas mataas yung dignidad niya kaysa sa akin. O kaya, ang tingin natin sa ating sarili, mas mahalaga ako kaysa sa iba. Sa lipunan man yan, sa simbahan man yan, nahuhulog tayo sa tukso na akalaing ang dignidad ko ay nakasalalay sa aking kayamanan at kapangyarihan. I remember one time, I attended a fiesta mass in one parish here in the Archdiocese of Manila. And because it was a fiesta mass, the church was jam-packed, no? punong-puno hanggang labas ang simbahan. And so when we were about to start the Mass, it happened that in the procession, I was, uh, uh, I stood at the back of the last lay minister of Holy Communion. I was the first concelebrant in line. No? Kasi po karaniwan sa procession, sa entrance procession ng Misa, yung mga sakristan, yung mga lektor, tapos yung mga lay ministers of Holy Communion, and then yung pare. Yun pong kinatatayuan ko ay yung unang-unang linya ng pare at ang nasa harapan ko ay yung mga lay ministers of Holy Communion. And so we started the procession. When we approached the first pew, yung unang upuan, I observed that there was a commotion 
between the lay ministers of Holy Communion and the ushers. No? And I overheard the discussion. No? Dumadaan po ako, so narinig ko. I realized that the first pew was supposed to be reserved for the lay ministers of Holy Communion. No? Siguro sa karaniwang misa, yung unang upuan para sa mga lay ministers of Holy Communion. But because the church was so full, people started to sit to occupy the first pew. Inupuan na rin nila. And so when the lay ministers came, who were supposed to sit at the first pew, they no, they no longer had any space. And so that was the reason for the commotion. They were telling the usher, Paalisin niyo yan. No, paalisin niyo yan. Kami dapat ang nakaupo dyan. And the usher, usher said, wala na po kami magagawa. No, wala po. Nung puno na po ang simbahan. No? And one of the lay ministers commented, kung hindi mo pa aalisin yan, kami ang aalis dito. Naging lay minister lang. Naging may self-entitlement na na kailangan meron akong reserve seat. I am better than the rest because I am a lay minister of Holy Communion. I deserve a seat. They do not. Magsisimba lang naman yan eh. Ako lay minister. Dahil ba lay minister, mas malaki na ang karangalan kaysa sa iba? Dahil ba pare, mas malaki na ang karangalan kaysa sa iba? Dahil ba ubispo, mas mataas na kaysa sa iba? We may have differences in our functions, but we will always be equal in dignity. Always remember that, especially in our dealings with one another. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not stain the white garment of our Christian dignity. Let us not degrade ourselves. Let us not humiliate ourselves. Huwag nating ibaba ang ating sarili at huwag tayong mamuhay ang ating pag-uugali ay huwag sanang hindi nararapat sa karangalan natin bilang mga anak ng Diyos. You are a child of God. And so live as a child of God. And as we maintain the purity of our Christian dignity, please also do not stain the dignity of others. Do not abuse. Do not hurt. Do not degrade or humiliate. Do not shame other people. Do not degrade their Christian dignity. Huwag nating ibaba ang ating kapwa at huwag nating tingnan sila ng mababa na parang walang halaga ang ating kapwa. It is very sad that in our society now, there are many factors that stain our Christian dignity. We do not respect human dignity at all times. Life has become so cheap Parang napakamura na lang ng buhay na pwedeng-pwedeng patayin ang mga tao, maging ang sanggol sa sinapupunan, patayin ang kalaban, patayin ang mga taong pwede namang mawala sa lipunan. Ganyan na lamang ba ang karangalan natin bilang tao? Let us recover our dignity as children of God. You are important, and so is everybody else. Ang bawat isa, anak ng Diyos, ang bawat isa, mahalaga. Dahil ang karangalan nating lahat ay tayo'y mga anak ng Diyos. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten and baptismal journey, let us always be reminded of who we really are. We are children of God. That is your dignity. You are a child of God. 
And every time you look at yourself in the mirror, always tell yourself, you are the child of God. Anak ka ng Diyos. And hopefully, with the grace of God, we will always live as true children of God. Please do not allow anything or anyone to stain the purity of your Christian dignity. And please do not stain the purity of the dignity of other people. Let us help each other maintain the purity of our dignity so that together we may bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. Please rise. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Like St. Peter, we believe that it is wonderful for us to be here. In the Divine Presence, we confidently bring our prayers to our God and Father. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, and other leaders of the Church, that they may always lead us to the glory of our heavenly homeland. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence and glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the lonely, and the oppressed, that through our practical care, they may see the favored Son of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may find it wonderful to worship in the company of the saints of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our dead, that they may enjoy the blessed vision of divine glory forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty Father, with grace and glory, you transform our lives. By these prayers, strengthen us to come through the trials of these earthly lives, earthly life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth are full of, of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he decided to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please rise. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, 
we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As children of our loving Father, let us now all together pray as Jesus taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a while. First of all, we wish to thank you for coming to the Manila Cathedral this morning and to participate in our Holy Mass. Maraming salamat po sa inyong participation, especially to those who came in white clothes. Maraming salamat din po sa mga nagtsaga na tumayo sa likod at sa labas para makasama sa ating pagdiriwang ngayon. And uh, we wish also to thank those who are joining the live streaming of this Mass. We thank you for your continued support to the Manila Cathedral. We also thank the different social media platforms that are sharing our Mass this morning. Maraming salamat po sa pagiging partners ng Manila Cathedral sa gawain ng evangelization. And we also thank our Manila Cathedral servants and staff for serving at our Mass this morning. Ngayon po ang ating pinagnilayan ay yung puting damit ng binyag. Next Sunday, we will reflect on the waters of baptism. Yung tubig na ibinubuhos sa atin sa binyag. Kaya sa isang linggo po ay magkakaroon tayo ng pagwiwisik ng tubig sa ating mga misa. Bilang paggunita ng tubig na ibinuhos natin, na ibinuhos sa atin noong tayo'y binyagan. So, come next Sunday and get wet with the waters of baptism. Ito po ang ating pagninilayan para sa susunod na linggo. At para po kayo ay maging updated sa mga activities, uh, programs, even reminders no, sa ng Manila Cathedral, uh, please like, follow, and share the Facebook page of the Manila Cathedral para po tayo ay uh, updated sa ating mga gawain, lalong-lalo na dito sa Manila Cathedral at sa ating activities para sa 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Maraming salamat pong muli at nawa ay pagpalain ng Diyos ang linggo natin. Nawa ay uh, bigyan tayo ng Diyos ng biyaya upang tayo'y mabuhay araw-araw bilang mga tunay na marangal, bilang tunay na mga anak ng Diyos. Please stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, 
we have reflected on the white garment that is a sign that we have become a new creation and have clothed ourselves in Christ in baptism. We have been clothed with the white garment as a reminder of the lavishness of God's love. White reminds us of our call to live pure and holy lives, that we are created in God's image and are imbued with the dignity of the children of God. Let us pray for each other that we may strive in holiness of life so that we can bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ and to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with the blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Your mission begins. Thanks be to God. Years of faith, grateful today.